Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's plugin we're going to go over is the Show Choices plugin. Now this is another official plugin that was made by the developers of Pixel Game Maker. And this is so that you can have choices during your dialogue with NPCs or other characters. And they also added in some options so that you could actually add progression to your game based on those choices. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we'll begin in the Plugins tab. I'm going to right click and click Add an Official Plugin. I'm going to choose the Show Choices. Click OK. Now with my Plugins Basic video, I went over exactly what these tabs are doing. The preview is basically just showing what you will expect to find in the runtime action. We don't set anything here. And the help just shows a little help if there is. The thing that we do need to set though is the parameter. And by default, it's the message background. And again, just like show message, if you don't have this, it will automatically install it. All right, so under imported, exported, message background. You can also make a new background uh, like we did in the show message. And I will be using that to show you how we can interchange that. But for now, we'll just use the message background here. And that's all we need to do to install the plugin. So now let's go to our object that's going to use it. And on this NPC object is where we are going to add the show choices. So I'm going to copy this state here. I'm going to say show choices. And we're going to have it the link B when we press A. Okay, so in this state, let's go to other runtime actions. And now when we go to the plugins tab, we can see that there is a new one, show choices. So we're going to click that. And right away we see that we have some choices. We have six choices. And then we have some other options that we can set down here. So before we can even do anything, we actually have to create some text. We have a hello text left over from when we, uh, the uh, show message uh, plugin video but we want some new text for this. So let's first off go and create some text. So I'm gonna hit okay for now, but we're gonna to go to resources, go to text, I'm gonna add a new text. I'm gonna call this choice one, and we'll just say turn red. And I'll give it some default font here. There we go. And then we'll add choice two, turn green. And choice three, turn blue. All right, so now we have our texts set as far as resources go. So we can jump back into the show choices and we can say, okay, choice one, I want to be the visualized text is gonna say turn red. Choice two, it's gonna say turn green. And choice three, it's gonna say turn blue. And we could have up to six, like we said, but we can just do three and it will auto scale the choice uh, accordingly. Matter of fact, let's see what that looks like. We'll just hit OK and leave all these settings uh, the, uh, the same. And we also need to add one more thing. We want to add the field of vision that is going to detect when the player is there. So we'll say discovered the talk range and we'll say the player. We'll hit OK. And we do need to click and, so this will be an all conditions. That way both of these have to be met. So now when we play, we can go up to the character and you can see that when we press A, we get the options. Now it's kind of funny because our character moves down when we are uh, choosing our options. So let's change that real quick. So what I did in the player is I added a pause state or a pause action, and I just ignore movement input and ignore direction change in this. And there's no link there, and the reason why is because we're actually going to execute object action to it. So we're gonna add an execute object action of the player, and we're gonna say we're gonna go to paused. Hit okay, and I'm gonna move that before we show the text. And now if we click play, and we go up there and press A, now we can go down and up and the character is not moving. All right, so now let's make our choices actually do something. I'm going to copy this one right here. I'm gonna say, this will be choice one. I'm just gonna expand this down there. I'm gonna delete these as well. 
and then I'll copy two more of these since we have three choices this will represent uh, each one will represent a choice choice two and then this one will be choice three all right so how we can determine what choice we the player chose is we can right click add a link and we'll do choice one first we can click add other condition settings and we can go to the plugins tab on here and we can select show uh, choice selected and here we can actually select from the choices that were chosen as well as cancel we'll get into cancel here in a minute but let's just say choice one will lead to this action so then we'll copy this and we'll say choice two will lead to this action and then lastly I'll just copy this we can say that choice three will lead to this action. Now, choice one, if we remember, was turning red, choice two was green, and choice three was blue. So to visualize this, we will add a filter, apply suck to cutter, and so this first one will be red, and I'll make it go within half a second. I will copy this. Choice two was green, so we'll make this one green. And then choice three was blue. All right, so now if we play test, we should have the results when we click uh, each option. So we'll say turn red. There we go. We can turn green. And we can turn blue. So that is how, essentially how it works. Now let's add some more stuff to it. So first off, let's complete the loop by unpausing the player and I'm going to delete that one but I'll keep this execute and I'll say go to wait so now the player will go to the wait one and this is going to happen right away so just unconditionally from all three of these I'm leaving a little space here for for later we'll see and then from uh, unpause, we need to go back to waiting to be talked to. So I'm going to create a shortcut right here and then say unconditionally, we will go to waiting to be talked to. Now, just so I know where the flow is starting and ending, I'm actually gonna come up here to waiting to be talked to. I'm gonna change it blue. And that way I know that this is kind of the start point. This is just the logic inside here, inside this uh, kind of node island thing. And then here's where the shortcut will flow back to it. And now if we play test, we should be able to see that we can go up and select an option and we can move around again and we can go and choose another option. All right, so now that we have a full loop, we have the choices and the response to those choices. Let's start diving into some of the details with the runtime action. So we'll go back into here and we'll go to this First one here, which is the font. And this is just letting us be able to override the font. So say we, with our uh, text resources, we had six by 10. So I'm just gonna choose the 12 by 12. Hit okay. And we'll go up there and hit A. And you'll see that it made the font bigger and it also auto scaled it, which is nice. So we don't have to worry about any positioning or anything. All right, I'm going to select not, uh, not set on that. Uh, now we're gonna go to the background. So the white frame is what we've been using and that is the frame. Let's hit okay, go to resources, go to images. Here's that message background that we're using. So the frame is this portion of it and it's going to scale it according to the size that it needs, okay? Now in the show message, we showed how you can edit this and actually make it change color or however you want. But for now, this we just know that when it's saying white frame, it's talking about this top portion. So then we have this second portion right here, and this one is referred to as black. So if we click black, we're gonna see that second style. There we go. And then if we click none, 
then we're obviously going to have none, and it's just going to be words. There we go. Now, how to change this color? I'm not sure. Uh, it must be in the plugin, just a default color. So maybe if we could dive into the plugin, that's where we could actually change this color. But I found no way to actually change the color of the highlighter for the choice. All right, so I'm just going to put this back to the white frame. And the position now, so we got centered, that's what we've been using. We can now do left. There we go. And we can now do right. And we can always do preview as well. Remember, preview just throws in the object and makes it run that state right away. So, or the, uh, show, the show choices in this case. So this is how we, a quick way we can do it. And you can see that since it went to this right away, we don't pause the player. All right, so I'll just keep this in center. And then we'll go over variable here in a minute, but the this last option here is cancel. And by default, it's disabled, so there's no way to cancel. So if we enable it, and we hit OK, we can now cancel, but we have to set the condition first. So we need to add a link from show text, and we'll just go straight to unpause, because this will be if we canceled. And we'll click the other runtime actions, and we'll say this is if we cancel. We'll hit OK. And now we should be able to press uh, B by default. So if I press, um, I'm on an Xbox, so if I press B, it will cancel it and nothing will happen. Now, if you wanted other controller uh, or other inputs for the cancel, you would go to control key management here. And you can see that it's using the cancel. So this is what it is using. So if we wanted another uh, input, we would have to add another cancel. Now we could add a keyboard right here but say you wanted more than just one of that type, then you would click add. You would say, I want this to be of a key type cancel. And then you would add the new one. So say that we also wanted a uh, Y to also cancel on an Xbox controller. This is how you would do it. Cause this key is what it's looking for. And anything in that key will be considered that button basically. So we hit OK now and I play test. I can go up, show choice, I can press Y to cancel or I can press B. So that's how you would change that if you wanted more input options. And real quick in the plugins, I'm going to change the image to that new background image that I showed you in the resources just to see that it will change if you change. You can see we have the red border now. And I'm going to change it back. And now let's go over the variable. And we can see here that there is a variable choice. Now, this isn't a, you can't set all kinds of variables like common or parent locked objects. You can only actually set the variable that's inside your object that is calling this runtime action. And it might be a little confusing because you're seeing all these other objects that I have that I can change. But unless this object has the exact same named variable, nothing is actually going to happen. So just note that this option only changes self variables of this object. Okay. For instance, and, and I'll show you an example here, but first let's create one. So let's go to, I'll hit cancel here. I'm going to create a variable in the object that's calling it. And I'm going to just say, variable and now in the show text I'm going to click on the NPC here and I'm going to select variable so that's where we will store the choice in this and I'll hit OK we'll play test it and now we're going to go to the NPC here I'm going to click details might be a little hard to see here, but here we have our variable, our newly created variable. So we'll see it's at zero right now. And as soon as I hit the uh, input to start, it goes to negative one. So it kind of zeroes it out basically. 
And then what's going to happen is, is, let's say I say turn red. It's going to then turn that variable value to 1. So we can use it for other things. And as soon as I click A again, it zeroes it out. And then you can say green. And then, so, so it made it 2, the variable. And then if we do blue, it's going to make the variable 3. So the variable will increase depending on the choice that was selected. 1 for 1, 2 for 2, etc. And let's see what happens actually if you cancel. Okay, if you cancel, then it just goes to its default value. And real quick, I'll just show you that if you do not have the same variable on this object, it, it won't do anything. So I'll just say, hey, I want to try to change the player's variable 001. So it's looking for this name variable of this object, actually. But since we don't have it, nothing will actually happen. So when I hit play test here, and I'll go to the player, which is the variable 001 that we're looking at, and it's at zero. And when I start to press uh, A here, it still stays at zero. When I turn red, it still sit, stays at zero. So just note that these variables are only going to work if there is that variable in this object. All right, so that is it for this plugin video of Show Choices. I hope everything made sense. We went over making a full loop of the choices, how to have multiple choices, cancel, more input buttons, the message background a little bit. And yeah, so with that said, I'll see you at the next video.